interested in learning Linux, but you're a Windows guy or gal, and you don't have a machine that you can dedicate to learning just Linux, well, thanks to the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can get started right now. Let me show you how. Linux is everywhere now. It just is. It's on all of our stuff. It's what runs in the cloud. And thanks to CI/CD pipelines, open source software popularity, and the cloud, Linux is growing more and more and more and more in demand from employers out there in the real world. And being a Windows person, if you went through all the Windows steps, getting into sysadmin and understanding all the Windows server roles and features and techniques and blah, 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 shifting to Linux is like, oh, do I have to? Like, that's a lot of work. I'm really scared about it. You know, there's a lot of risk, it feels like. But Windows has accepted that this is happening, that Linux is just more and more everywhere. And we now need to operate between a Windows and Linux environment. So they created what's called the Windows subsystem for Linux so that your machine, whether Windows Server or Windows 10, can run Linux on it right now. Those same Windows commands that you knew can now work on a Linux machine or vice versa because it's all running on the same computer. So what's really cool about it is I can have a Windows Server or a Windows Desktop and I can install Linux apps on it. Let me show you how. The Windows subsystem for Linux is a feature that you need to install. So click start, search for the word features, and you'll see turn Windows features on or off right here. Give that a click, and this little dialog box pops up. If I scroll down, one of the first things I see is Hyper-V. Now this isn't necessarily required to do this, but it's recommended because there is a second version of Windows Subsystem for Linux that leverages Hyper-V, and that'll just give you that option later down the road. You might as well take care of it now if you have Windows 10 Pro and you can install this feature. So from there, I'll scroll down even more, and here you see Windows Subsystem for Linux. I'll check that off and click OK. We'll give it just a minute to install all of these features, then we'll jump back to it when it's done. It took just a second to install that, and now it tells me we need to reboot the machine, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click Restart now, we'll jump back one more time once the machine's up and running. Now that my computer is booting back up, we need to bring up the Windows Store so that we can choose our distribution of Linux that we want to work with. I mean, we can work with Ubuntu, we can work with CentOS. You can really take your pick when it comes to working with Linux, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search, and I'm going to search for Ubuntu. And you can see right here it comes up. There's Ubuntu 1804 LTS. That's the one that I would like to work with. But you could choose your own, work with it that way. So I'll click on Ubuntu 1804 and I'll choose install. I can click on the little arrows here to see the installation process. And it goes pretty quick and it tells me that Ubuntu 18.04 just got installed. How do I check it out? Well, I can click on the start button. I can click on the start button. Right here, I see Ubuntu 18.04. I'll give it a click. And the terminal does say it is installing and this may take a few minutes. So we'll give it a few minutes to finish installing all of the features and services that it needs to run Ubuntu on my machine. After about 30 seconds, it tells me I need to set a username as well as a password. And this will be the account that has sudo privileges or sudo privileges, however you want to say it, on this machine. So now here I am. I'm on an Ubuntu machine, which is running on my Windows machine. And now that I've set up this username and password by clicking on the Ubuntu 18.04 and going through the prompts, I can now actually launch the Windows subsystem for Linux. Check this out. I'll close this terminal. And then on the start menu, I can click start and simply search for WSL. That's Windows Subsystem for Linux. If I press enter, it brings up my terminal for Windows Subsystem for Linux. The path that it shows I'm in right now is MNT, which is the mount folder in Linux. Then there's the C drive. So I can actually explore all of my Windows directories from the mount folder here on the Linux machine. For instance, I'll change directories into just the explicit C drive right there give it an LS, and I can see things like program files, data, users, windows. These are all the things that we're used to seeing. If I go even a step higher and give it an LS, I see all of my drives there, my C drive, my D drive, and my E drive. So if I change into the E drive, I can then change into my dev folder and then my code samples. And if I press LS, I now see all of my code samples that I have posted on my GitHub. What's really cool about this is I can type code dot period for this directory and that'll launch VS code in this directory. But here's the kicker. It'll open up the terminal using the Ubuntu terminal. So if I press enter, check this out. Right here, it prompts me to install the WSL extension. So I'll say, okay, yes, let's install that. 
And with that installed, I can change my terminal to be the bash terminal here. And look at that. We're here on the code samples folder in a bash setting. So where this really shines is now I can actually do debugging with Linux based applications right here in VS Code using the Windows subsystem for Linux. So if I were running Node.js, for instance, in the Windows subsystem for Linux, I could actually do my debugging in VS Code right there. Beyond that, let me show you how we can do some more cool stuff. Let's say I do a sudo apt install nginx, a web server that typically only runs on Linux machines. I'll say yes to go ahead and install it. Then I'll start nginx by saying sudo service nginx start. This does prompt my machine to ask like, hey, can we open port 80 for nginx? So I'll say allow to that. And at this point, nginx is running on this machine. Check it out. If I bring up a web browser now and I go to localhost, look at that. I'm running an Nginx web server on a Windows computer. It just happens to be running the Windows subsystem for Linux under the hood. So that is a basic hello world. How do you get started? How do you even get Linux? What does Windows subsystem for Linux do? That's what we can do now. You can actually get an Ubuntu machine up and running on your Windows 10 computer. And then you can use that Ubuntu machine to actually browse through your files. You can spin up applications like Ansible or Nginx, or you've got Python installed on Ubuntu by default too. Now you can script things out and run them in a Linux environment and it still interacts with your Windows devices with your Windows files and folders and directories. So whether you're a Windows person who's trying to get into Linux or if you're a Linux person who needs to work with Windows computers, the Windows subsystem for Linux bridges that gap and now you have both machines in one. It's a really cool feature. That's getting started with Windows Subsystem for Linux. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.